<laughs> we are live, <Okay>. baby. <laughs> <laughs> I never know. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. And welcome to Frizy's Corner Bar. Yes, welcome, welcome. If you're new um, to our site, just want to um, say welcome. Please like, share, and comment if you can. Um, Frizy's Corner Bar was actually first started back in 1945 by my mom and dad right after the World War II. And my mom ran that bar for 37 years or 40 years, a long time anyway. So we're just trying to continue on that tradition. So um, Shannon has three really nice cocktails tonight that she's going to uh, make up. So it's a good night to get a little frisky. Mm -hmm. I have a Moroccan, um, a spicy Moroccan stew. It's not super spicy, but it's got a little bit of kick to it. So um, you want me to get well, for New that? Englanders, it may be a little spicy. We noticed that uh, our New England friends have a different uh, taste palette than the, uh, our friends from uh, Missouri or the South. So, uh, oh, and as always, you know, we'd love to have the live comments because then we can interact with everybody. We know you're actually watching. And we're doing something different. I'm using a different microphone, so hopefully the sound is going to be better. And... Uh, Test one, two, three. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. So. And Mike won't be banging stuff. Banging stuff. I like the bang stuff. So he does. anyway, he so. Does. so why don't you start with uh, talking about what you're going to do with your. Uh, yeah. So um, what I've got. Actually, I had a couple of things I wanted to go over. Is that all right, first? Absolutely. Okay. Let me just uh, make sure this isn't kicking up. I just got one thing. Kicking up. Sorry, sorry. So I had to drive to Boston today because I'm very excited. I actually uh, uh, got an appointment for a COVID shot, but on the way home, the traffic was horrific. It took me almost two hours to get home, but it was worth it. It was uh, absolutely worth getting the shot. So Kevin Showy says, uh, sounds great. Okay. All right. I have a list of things. Oh, great. I always love it when he's got a list. list. So. All right, so um, last week, this one, it's just kind of strange. But anyway, last week I sold my truck. So last Friday I was not in the best of moods because I've driven a truck, a pickup truck, since I was 15. I learned to drive a three on the tree, 1963 Chevy. Um, and I've only owned one car in my entire life. And I think I owned it for about five years till some guy ran a red light and totaled it. So I've always had a pickup. I sold my truck last week to this really nice young couple and uh, I was asking one price and I knew that I could sell it to Carvana for a certain price, but I knew it was worth a little more than that. So what I ended up doing, they came and I was talking with uh, the lady and she was telling me how she was trying to sell her vehicle to Carvana, but they only offered her 200 bucks. And so while he's looking at my truck and everything, checking it all out, I said, so what is, um, I forgot his name, uh, your boyfriend drive. And oh, well, he has an old Impala, just turned over 300,000 miles. And uh, it was, you know, it, it, as I'm there and talking with them more, um, you know, they took it for the drive, they came back and he goes, you know, I, we, we tried to pull together all the money that we had and uh, we just can't swing what you're asking. So they made an offer and then I said, no, I can't take it. I can't take it, that money at that price. I can't sell the truck at that price. So um, I'll take uh, $600 less than that. When I told them that, they both she started crying. He was all teared up. He was like wanting to shake my hand and hug me and say, no, 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 stay back, stay back, <laughs> all the COVID stuff, right? So anyway, I ended up selling it. So I was a little um, little weird about, you know, not having a truck any longer. So, um, but anyway, this week turned out to be an amazing week. Um, I installed a pull-up bar out in the backyard, which you guys are welcome to come by and use. If you're local, it's in my backyard. Um, I got my first COVID vaccine on Tuesday and Shannon got hers. Um, we booked our Maui condo for two weeks, so we're, we're happy about that. Um, can't read what the Don't hell that say says. That. Don't, uh, I just don't want you to say that other stuff, please. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so we'll talk Betty, about that next week. No, anyway. we won't. Betty Brown says, sounds great. I agree. And uh, Jane Showy says, Friday night, fun way to start the weekend. We absolutely love starting the weekend this way. So 
Okay, I've got to get uh, cooking a little bit. So what I'm doing is I have this Moroccan stew that I made. I actually made it yesterday. Um, and the reason I did is because of the, the types of spices that were in it, um, I really wanted them to meld and integrate into the into the stew itself. So this was the last. So this is actually the last part of what needed to be done and I didn't want to put it in there yesterday because um, zucchini cooks pretty quick and um, I didn't want it to be mushy or anything of that nature so um, so I'm going to add the zucchini in there this is uh, an organic zucchini that I bought and I have my garbanzo beans and I'm going to add those into um, my stew over here. And we'll show you that when it's all uh, yeah, when it's all yeah. finished up. So it should be just a few minutes to um, finish this up. Those are my garbanzo beans, and uh, I just stir this around. And and what did you do with the? Make sure you explain what you did with your garbanzo beans. How you prep, prep those? I will just one second, and I'm going to serve this up tonight with couscous, uh, parmesan, couscous, and um, I use canned beans, so I don't know if you can buy dried uh, garbanzo beans, and I'm not a huge garbanzo bean guy anyway. I love garbanzo beans. So anyway, anytime you use canned beans, it's always important to um, pour them in. Sorry about all the noise. Shannon freaks out. Pour them into a strainer and then rinse um, everything until the water um, runs clear and there's no bubbles. You want to get all the bubbles off because that's all of the stuff that, because beans are cooked in the can. I don't know if you realize that. They put some liquid in there with some salt and some other stuff and then they uh, seal it up and then it gets like um, cooked that way. So anyway. <laughs> So, um, did you say, I, did you say till it's not bubbly anymore? Yes, like, okay, it's not bubbly I'm sorry, anymore. I missed, missed that. So you want me to say anything else about what happened no, with you this no, week? No, I do not. I okay. Really All right. Well, it's really good stuff. But and I then Kevin says, it. you're a good man. Bless you, Mike. <laughs> he is a good man. So, uh, yeah, very much appreciate that. So I have three cocktails tonight. I'm going to make the two stirred cocktails at the same time. Um, we did test on these cocktails, and um, the one I really liked, Mike wasn't a huge fan of. The one he liked, I was a big fan of, but I really wanted to, uh, um, and I, I just loved all the names of these cocktails, which is why I wanted to make them. So the, uh, the, the gin-based one that I'm going to make, and I don't have all of the, uh, all of the specs uh, for the second one because I didn't have, have time to send it to the guy. So the Hanky Panky, this is a uh, recipe from the Savoy American Hotel. It's uh, back at the turn of the century. They had a woman bartender, Ida, they called her uh, uh, Coley, and she invented, she created this drink. This drink is really a riff on a sweet martini. So it is one half ounce of dry gin. A half an out, I mean, a one and a half ounces of dry gin, one and a half ounces of sweet vermouth, and just a bar spoon of Fernet Branca. And then we're gonna put an orange twist on that. And then the other one that I'm gonna make for myself is called a Sin Sin. And this is actually a twist on a Manhattan. It is, uh, it, this is one part, one part, one part, which I always love those because it's easy to remember. So it's scotch, it is sweet vermouth. And it is also, um, I bought this new liqueur, and I'm going to show it in the, in, the, in the stream. It's called Sinar. This is an um, Italian uh, liqueur. It's an, it's an Amaro, and it is made from artichokes. So uh, I, I had to try that. A couple people on one of those bartender site, sites that I like was talking about it. So, and I do like that. So I'm going to start because both of these have vermouth. I'm going to start with the sweet vermouth. I'm just using kochi. Um, and as always, you want to keep the sweet vermouth in the refrigerator uh, because it is wine-based and it is, 
it will go bad if you don't keep it in the refrigerator. It'll go rancid. So uh, you'll want, you want to make sure you store your, your sweet vermouth or anything that has a wine base in the refrigerator. Then the main gin on the uh, the main liquor on the hanky panky is a dry gin. You want to make sure you use a dry gin. We we did uh, we ran out of our dry gin and we made this with a botanical gin, and it's just not as good. So this is an ounce and a half of the uh, dry gin. So what are some brands of botanical gin? Well, why don't you talk about that? Why I I don't want to get confused here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do an ounce of scotch. Go ahead. Okay. Um, a botanical gin is going to have more flowers. It's going to be more. Um, so the ounce of scotch went into the Simpson. Well, I'm, I'm mixing two drinks at the same time. No, so fine. I mean, and then so. I'm going to put an ounce of the Sinar in with the. Uh, the sin sin and why don't you you can explain that when I'm stirring okay okay let me just not get confused yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the hanky panky we are going to use a bar spoon of the Fernet Branca and a book I actually I have this uh, uh, bartending um, mix mixing spoons or tablespoons that I got off of uh, Cocktail Kingdom, and I love them because it does have a bar spoon measure on it, which you're not gonna find in the traditional measure. And the other thing I like about them is that it actually has the amount of ounces that is in each one of these. So if you, uh, I'm gonna pour this off to the side because a bar spoon is just a little. And I think as I mentioned in the other show when Mike was it's when you're measuring small, a lot of times it, it goes over and you don't want that over in the drink because then there's no point in measuring it, right? So I have measured everything into both of my mixing glasses. Whenever I mix, whenever you mix, you always want to add all your liquors before you add the ice because you don't want it to be diluting while you're measuring and talking and adding all of the other, uh, the other components. And then... I'm going to also prepare my glasses. So the Sin Sin is going to be served in an old-fashioned glass, and the Hanky Panky is going to get served in this coupe glass. And I'm going to put my one of Mike's famous ice balls in the, uh, as Carolyn Flatter said, she'll share the recipe with you. And uh, so let's see. What's this say? Spill it. Well, Robin says, spill it. What's going on? Yeah, well. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, yeah, we will. So, I'm going to, uh, when we stir, we're going to put a lot of ice in these containers that we're stirring with because we really want to get the, uh, get the chill going. And I'm going to stir these both at the same time. And what's, what's interesting is the one in the um, the one I'm stirring in the tin is actually going to um, chill faster than the one I'm stirring in the glass. I can even see right now that the uh, the glass is is frothy. So just give this a couple more stirs. And then I will pour. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the uh, julep strainer on this one. The sin sin. And then just so I don't cross contaminate, um, I only have one julep strainer. I actually prefer the use of julep strainer whenever I'm doing. I'm just using the Hawthorne strainer for the hanky panky. Set those to the side. And then both of these drinks take an orange twist. So just going to take that orange and squeeze it. And then, again, I was watching, yeah, you'll want to put it on the, around the rim. And then I, we were watching this cocktail show last night, and the guy actually took it and ran it down the stem of the glass so that, you know, after you take it and drink it and get that aroma, it's it's actually it stays the scent stays with you on your fingers. So I thought that was, I, I thought I had to give that a try. 
Okay, so honey, you want to come taste your uh, hanky panky? Sure. And I got my sins in. Okay, can you talk? Or you yeah, talk? no, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll put the show the food cam. Okay. So first, let's cheers. 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 Love I you. love you. What am I drinking? Cheers, everyone. That cheers. is the hanky panky, and I am drinking the sinsin. Oh, well, I'm gonna feel frisky after this. Mm. I, I'll tell you, I I really love this drink. I love. The, I love putting this. I used to not like scotch, but I love scotch in a cocktail. Now this scotch that I'm using is Dewar's, a blended uh, a blended scotch. It's a 12 year old. It's a 12 year old, so it is smoky. Some people don't like to have so much smoke in their cocktails, and um, they'll use like a monkey shoulder. Now I don't have any monkey shoulder, but uh, but I may get some because I was never really a scotch person. Just like I was never really a gin person until we did this. Yes. So let's see. What do we got? We got uh, Dory says, cheers. Cheers, Dory. And Stephanie Norman says, cheers. Cheers, Stephanie. Cheers. Okay. Now we're going to show Mike's uh, Mike's dish here. So you want to explain? Okay. So what I made is uh, a Parmesan couscous. And I um, just shredded or um, shaved a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top of it. Um, this is the Moroccan spicy stew, and I put up about a big tablespoon of non-fat um, yogurt, unflavored yogurt on there, just to kind of cool down a little bit of the heat. Um, what's in here is uh, carrots, um, garbanzo beans, tomatoes, uh, a bunch of really nice Moroccan-style spices, like allspice, cinnamon, um, Tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper, a um, few other spices. All, all, all of the recipe for this is on friesyscornerbar.com. Um, I just added in the zucchini. There's um, a potato, two small potatoes in there, um, and some butternut squash. And it normally wouldn't look quite this relaxed, I guess you could say, but it's because I cooked, I made this yesterday and then it sat. And then when I heated it up today, it obviously continued cooking. So if you're going to uh, make this today or tomorrow and serve it on Sunday, maybe don't cook it quite as far as what I did. Um, I bet it's going to be delicious. No, it is. It's very good. All the flavors actually, have all melded in there. So. I actually love it when you cook sweet potatoes down because it kind of thickens in. You know, I it's like butternut it. squash. Oh, or it even the squash. Yeah, so it, it's you, very tender. Yeah. It's it's nice. It's got a nice flavor. Um, I just want to mention a couple of the other spices on here. Um, yeah, Dory was asking about the Yeah, spices. so I'll, I'll just rattle this stuff off. It's it's olive oil, onion, cumin, cinnamon, coriander, allspice, cayenne pepper, salt, butternut squash, potatoes, carrots, tomatoes, and three cups of water. Um, it was supposed to be two small zucchinis, but um, I used one of them last night in um, something else I had made. And then that can of garbanzo beans, and it's it's a super simple recipe. It honestly took me about 20 minutes to get everything prepped. And when I say prepped, what I do is I lay out everything. So I take my recipe and I pull everything together so it's all lined up, and I just follow down the order of what it calls for. You know, and then that way I don't miss anything or I don't question did I add that or not add it. And it also is good because as you're cooking, you want to be able to rapidly add in what, what's being called for versus while your onions are cooking, now you're looking for this or that. So I have everything all diced and sliced and, and it's all ready to go. I have several cutting boards, one with all my spices laid out and in, in, in these little bitty, um, I use these little bitty like ramkins or whatever the hell they're called, these little bitty bowls. So I use those and I have all my spices in there. So if, if everything is going in there all together spice-wise, I'll just dump it all into one little container and then um, just makes it simple. And then it just kind of cooked for about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. And then I thought I had shut it off. And then I went out and did some stuff. I came back in and I realized I hadn't. So it, it kind of got a little overcooked. And um, But anyway, so. Happy Friday, Susan. And then 
Kevin, your dish looks and sounds great. Thank you, Kevin. Well, I'm having an Arby's for dinner. <laughs> Arby's. America's roast beef. Yes, up. sir. I they think they, they right. don't have Arby's up here. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. But I think yeah. Arby stands for America's roast beef. Yes, sir. At least that's what I thought. Uh, so. It did. When we lived in Kansas City, there was one just a block from our house, and I would walk down there once in a while. They do have good roast beef sandwiches, that's for sure. Okay, so now the final drink I'm going to make, I'm just going to make one. Mike likes this drink. This is a hanky panky. I mean, this is a, um, a sidecar riff called Between the Sheets. So, and I have a funny story at the end about Between the Sheets. So, we are going to, this is. We did side. We've done sidecars a couple times. It's uh, one of our favorite uh, drinks. So this is cognac. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of cognac. And do I have the yeah? Uh, do I have the between the sheets recipe? I think I do. Let me put it up here. Okay. So it's an ounce and a half of cognac. It is three quarters ounce of orange liqueur and we i really like this uh um dry curacao in in this particular drink yeah we've never had that and our friend brett and sandy had brought that over once when we were Can having a, scoot over a little closer oh, when well, we were having a french um we were having a french theme night dinner and everybody was supposed to bring something french or wear um sort of french clothes so brett had brought that over and uh at first, we weren't sure what to do with it, and um, we actually used it up pretty quickly. So, so this is a half an ounce of white rum. I love this Flor de Cana white rum. It's hard to find though, because I went and looked for it at just the normal liquor store, and I couldn't find it. The only place I can find that is uh, Total Wines, and Mike has banned me from going to Total Wines for a while. Because I always end up getting way too much. Stuff. When you're on the first name basis with all the cashiers, you know you have to start cutting. cutting and that is off. a half an ounce of lemon juice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide this. Just uh, sorry, I need to hide that. And then this is a shaken drink because it has the lemon juice in it. I'm gonna fill my shaker with ice. Oops, I meant to fill this half with ice. Sorry. I messed up. Well, you know, I missed shaking last week. So I'm yeah. So I have been relegated to stir only drinks for some reason. Stop it. Okay, Sandy says. The Moroccan stew is great, but I forgot to add the yogurt to cool it down, so it was a tad spicy. Yes. I'm glad you made it. And then we say, yum. Oh, between the sheets. Yes. So here is, and this is going to get served in a chilled coupe glass. And we are going to garnish this. This one gets garnished with the lemon. And actually, I meant to double strain that. Sorry, that I should have double strained that for my fine mesh strainer. That's okay. But I'm getting excited about the between the sheets story. So I'm gonna do the uh, the lemon, do it around the rim, and here is the between the sheets. We will. Mmm, that's good. Just set it down. I'll I taste it. it. I will after you set it down. Well, and then I want you to set it up here. I will. So now here is our between the sheet story. Oh, yes, that is good. Yeah, it is very good. So whenever we go to a, a Chinese restaurant and we get fortune cookies, we always open up the fortune cookies and we read the fortune. And then at the end of it, can you come over? I can't see you. Okay. At the end of it, you add between the sheets. So, Mike, you want to read your first fortune there? And we'll see how funny these are. Sometimes they're hilarious. Read it out loud. Don't stop. 1754. Oh, wait. Those are lottery numbers. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Eat your vegetable, and you will grow up big and strong like Popeye between the sheets. 
Talent's okay, I guess. Yeah, yes. Effort and courage are not enough without purpose and direction between the sheets. Now that one's good. Well, that one's good. <laughs> we'll do what we'll do yeah, two more. Yeah. Let's see what <clears throat> and Susan, so I just get a text from Susan. Of course, Shannon, you have a between the sheets story. I have many between the sheets oh, yeah. stories. Yes, she does. <laughs> and we won't go there. <laughs> darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that between the sheets. How come I'm getting all the sucky ones? I don't know. Dispel negativity through creative activities between the sheets. Now, now we're talking. <laughs> So that is always a fun way, in my opinion, to uh, uh, to end a, uh, a dinner when you have uh, fortune cookies. So again, we appreciate everyone for joining us on Friday's Corner Bar. If you have ideas, next week we are supposed to have a guest. I have not heard back from her yet, but uh, we're supposed to have a guest uh, to uh, do the cooking segment. And uh, I'll... You know, we'll do cocktails to coordinate with that. But uh, as and I won't always, do any shaking. As always, like, comment, and share. We actually have over 500 followers now, which I'm very excited about. And uh, we appreciate everyone joining us. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, P.S. Oh. We still have a few T-shirts left if you're interested. I think they're they're, they're all small. They're small sizes though. Like, small and medium. Yeah, we have some small and mediums, and maybe. Maybe an extra large. I have to go count. I have to go figure. Yeah, there's out. only a couple left, but um, and I do have. I think I have a couple women's larges. What well, women's size large T-shirts? Yeah, that I don't know, but I think we have about six left, um, and we won't be ordering but for a while. Small but yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you're interested, let us know. Well, have a great let's weekend. See what we have. Oh. Uh, Dory says, "Love that tradition." Thank you. Uh, let's see, we say... Hey, Rebecca's whoops. there. Catherine? Thanks, Frizies. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Catherine. Jim Southwick says, happy Friday. And we'll get your shirt out to you, Jim. It's on our table right here, ready to be mailed. And Martin says, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Martin. Hi, Rose. Well, thank you, guys. Love you. <laughs>